To our other big story today. It is the story of Jimmy Trindade, a local man who grew up on the water off Palm Beach County, a man who has not been seen since that fateful day in January 2006 when he left the Bahamas headed for home. The intrigue is heightened because of Trindade's once close friendship with Roger and Peggy Gamblin, locals who fled from here and were finally corralled out west to come back here to face charges that they had ripped off their title company for millions. But Roger Gamblin never talked. He died of a heart attack before investigators could find out what he might know. And so the story with all of that intrigue is the subject of a Dateline report tonight. And Dateline's Chris Hansen joins us in our studio now. Chris, five years after the fact, so many questions still unanswered. You know, unanswered. the interesting thing, Mike, uh, about our story tonight is that we have people speaking out for the first time, including a retired federal agent who investigated the case. Jimmy Trindade, as you know, was a beloved father and expert sailor. He disappeared from a boat in Caribbean waters. The hunt to find out what happened to him would cover hundreds of miles of ocean, it would drive lifelong friends apart, and it made many suspect something dark had been going on under the sun. Florida native Jimmy Trindade knew his way around the Bahamian Islands as well as any local. In December 2006, Jimmy, his daughter Taylor, and wife Candace were in Spanish Key for a two-week vacation with their best friends, the Gamblins. Roger Gamblin sent over three of his own powerboats from the U.S. to the Bahamas, including this 38-foot Donzi, one of the fastest boats on the high seas. Roger bought the Donzi after it was used in the movie Miami Vice with Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx. This is home video of Jimmy leaving the Bahamas on the morning of January 12, 2006, saying goodbye to friends at the dock. Behind Jimmy was Roger's son, Chris, followed by his friend, Brian Pratt's, in a three-boat caravan. Three hours after they left the Bahamas, tragedy struck. Jim was missing and that the boys, meaning Brian and Chris, had lost sight of him. Then, ten months after Jimmy's disappearance, a Homeland Security agent named Don Guthrie got a call from an informant of his, a former drug smuggler. Jimmy Trindade's uh, Donzi, his 38-foot Donzi, was sabotaged and that this endeavor was related to a uh, cocaine smuggling venture. Agent Guthrie had his suspicions about the last two people to see Jimmy alive and called in Chris and Brian with their lawyers and confronted them. They posed the theory that somehow Mr. Trindade had come upon the boys involved in a drug deal and he was killed in their presence. But there's no evidence to support it. Chris Gamblin and Brian Pratt denied they were involved in any kind of drug deal at sea, nor witnessed Jimmy Trindade's murder. Five years later, Taylor Trindade still wonders what happened to her father. I just want my dad back. I just wish he was around. I just graduated last year. He wasn't there for my graduation. It's just hard. So uh, with so many theories and so many possibilities, uh, you know, what, what stands out as the, the most likely at this point? I think what stands out as the most likely theory, Kelly, is that somebody sabotaged Jimmy Trindade's boat. Mm -hmm. He was smart enough to get the water out of the system, catch up. He witnessed something that investigators also think um, the other two boaters witnessed, mm -hmm. both Chris Gamblin and uh, his pal, and somehow got caught in the middle of it. And he met his demise. But, I mean, no, no body. There's ne nothing's ever No been body. But here's the interesting thing. They went through the GPS of the boat, right? And there's a record kept. Uh -huh. Every waypoint was deleted except one. And at a critical time, it puts the boat back in the Bahamas. And that makes people suspicious as if after something happened, somebody took the boat back there, scrubbed it, sanitized it, and then okay. put it back towards Florida in the ocean. Despite the dogged pursuit here, is this a mystery that likely your sense from your interviews is one that's beneath the sea and won't surface unless some loose lips uh, come along in years to come I think, to, to bring this thing back to life? I think to Mike, light. you're exactly right. I, I think uh, what could happen after the story airs uh, will be people start talking. Somebody gets pinched, somebody gets in trouble, somebody has to give it up. And that's how this case is going to be solved. And Roger Gamblin's wife, uh, the, Peggy. here, Peggy, mm -hmm. of course, uh, everybody had hoped that Roger Gamblin might be some source of information. Right. That died when he died with a heart attack. Absolutely. Uh, and that trail went cold in terms of real valid information with her. Is that something still to be mined? Well, you know, she hasn't really talked to anybody. As you know from covering the story locally, she has reached a plea agreement yep. uh, and uh, is to serve 
I guess, three years in prison, is it? Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see if she has anything to say at some point down the road. What did Roger share with her? What did Chris Gamblin yeah. share with her? And we were looking at the, the video of Taylor right. Trinidad. So, I mean, how sad. Such I mean, a tragic it's case. It's such a mystery, yeah. and it's very intriguing, but this is a father. And we'll get into this tonight. It's bizarre, some of the communications that Chris Gamblin has had with Taylor Trindade. I mean, just mm. real strange stuff, uh, hard to explain. Uh, and you'll see that tonight. Chris, uh, stand by for just a moment. Sure, we absolutely. also are lucky enough to have Palm Beach Post reporter Jan Tuckwood mm -hmm. with us, who's followed the story from the very outset. She joins us live in our studio. That's right. In particular, I, I know you covered a, a lot um, of the, the gambling side of this story. Jan, what do you want to add to what Chris has said in this, this mystery that has been intriguing so many people for so many years? The um, Roger Gamblin part of the saga is what makes it just an incredible mystery, the fact that Roger would launch this all-out search for his best friend, and then he would suddenly disappear with his wife two years later. What are the odds of that happening? That adds such a different element to this, and I think it makes it this one of the most mysterious cases that we've ever covered in Palm Beach County. And I've been here for a long time. I grew up in Lake Worth. I grew up with um, Jimmy Trindade's younger siblings. And for those of us who grew up in Lake Worth, to new Jimmy and his family, this is the kind of story that never goes away. It will never be over. And will there be answers? We'll have to see, as Chris says. Well, and, and the connection with the Gamblins and then knowing what happened to both of them and taking off and being gone for a couple of years, I think a lot of people were suspicious, you know, were they in cahoots in some way? Or, you know, what did the Gamblins know and what had, you know, conspired between them? Well, I think nobody leaves town with their uh, company's money if they don't have some uh, sinister motives. It, they took an incredible gambit to just take off. So uh, everyone who knew Jimmy and Lake Worth, of course, suspects sinister motive. No one has any facts. We're um, all in the same darkness with that. Jan right. Tuckwood with the Palm Beach Post. We thank you. And Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. We thank you for shedding My some pleasure. light on a case that may never fully satisfy us with the answers, but certainly tonight we'll at least put the puzzle together and allow people right. to see it in a much more full way uh, based on your reporting. Well, let's hope it shakes uh, some answers loose. Thanks. Exactly. Be great. Lost at Sea airs tonight on Dateline at 9 o'clock right here on News Channel 5. It's been a pleasure. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.